<laughs> so, um, yeah, so I was wrong from my other, uh, by the way, we are talking about The Exorcist. I just want to start with that. I forgot to have a little bit of intro, but that's okay. Uh, I don't need an intro. Since, uh, my apologies for the other video I did where, um, where I said that Father Marin was in Afghanistan. I was wrong. He was in Iraq. And, um, but I want to go over that. Again, I want to go over that Iraq scene, as, as it's called. And, um, and, um, so, so he's, uh, pretty much, um, he's involved in this archaeological dig of an ancient civilization in the, in the, in, in the Iraqi desert. And, uh, he finds the, um, and all of them are, have, they, they found something and it's deep within the earth and, he he digs it out and ends up this. Uh, it looks like um, the head of Burfomet maybe, um, but uh, it's it's definitely it has a sense of evil. It it's, it has the color of green, which is a theme in the Exorcist itself because the uh, the vomit is green. The toys that Rangans makes are made of green clay. You know, it it definitely has that theme of. Uh, there, there's something with with the color green. So, and so he, um, so he goes back to this office where uh, a bunch of other priests, especially mercenaries. <laughs> yes, she does, and um, she does vomit green. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's a theme of green is evil in this movie. Like it, there's. It's, it's some kind of um, symbol. I don't, I don't know it's symbolism, but it's definitely like uh, they want to represent in in color, basically. And uh, so he goes to these um, other missionaries like himself, and he's uh, he's going on to another area. You know, he feels called to, for some odd reason, like he wants to move from place to place right now. But something is stopping him from doing so, because when he's in the office, looking at the, uh, the, the 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 findings and and talking about it, the clock stops, and he turns around and he looks at this with this concerned look, and I think this has a much more Im implication later on in the film. And and I and I'll get to that like l later a little bit because uh, also with um, he's taking a great amount of pills he's old when he takes the pills he is, he's literally shaking like he like there's something wrong with him physically it could be his heart it could be an ulcer um, it could be with it's just I mean, is he, is he having a heart attack? Did he have a heart attack? You know, something like that. It feels like that he needs these pills to live, you know? And, um, in fact, it is, it is advised later on in the movie that a doctor says don't take alcohol. It could, you know. And so he explores the place a little while. And uh, he's out on the dunes. He almost gets like ran over by a coach with a black horse and a and a black coach you know driving a woman dressed in black and this and, and it's a very old woman again it could be that could be symbolism for uh that the horse is like the horse driving his carriage of a father Marin and the the woman is represented what Reagan will be later, but who knows? Um, so, the thing is, though, he goes out into the desert, and it seems like he gets challenged by this, um, not desert, but outside of town, and who knows why he's there? Maybe to check out another piece of the landscape before he leaves, or it's not fully clear. But he definitely wants to get away from the hustle and bustle. Which is interesting because in the religious text of 
the Bible, uh, uh, Jesus leaves the the city in order to find, uh, in order to go fasting in the desert, and um, he wants to be alone, as, as as well, and so therefore he gets challenged by the devil. This sort of reminds me of that sort of text. I, I wonder if they had that in mind or not, because it seems like that's what they wanted to do. I don't know. It it just it's very on the nose for me, but that could be me in my religious sort of background looking toward that. But but he does get challenged because you can't have like this scene of him looking at the statue that suddenly appeared. Like it, it you think he would have seen it of this uh, of of the demon Pazuzu. Wilderness. Yeah, it's going to wilderness sometimes. Exactly. Yeah, and so he was he was he was definitely something that appeared out of nowhere because he would have seen it by now and all of a sudden there's a shadow behind him and then he sees it and then he goes around and take a better look at it you know to see its face because he's looking at the back of it and to, and, and it's blocking the sun and so he uh, he can't really get a look at it he goes around and it ends up being this statue of this Pazuzu demon and then he looks over and there's a white and black dog fighting each other and this is now this thing I know is direct symbolism of good versus evil like there's this this wild dogs this black and, and white dog are rounding each other like chasing each other's tails you know it's it's very much symbolism of the battle between good and evil you know and then it does this b beautiful shot of father Marin and the statue across from each other it definitely reminds me of like Dragon Ball Z where Goku and Vegeta are on the rocks and um, except in Goku and Vegeta fight it's uh, Vegeta is the elite so he's above Goku and so therefore he's looking down on Goku you know so that's uh, but still they're on they're on equal grounds in that point so they're looking across from each other and then there's this red sunset maybe it symbolizes the your your time's coming to an end and this is your and he, he kind of knows this is his i think in his mind and his soul his, his his body and his mind are saying this is you're gonna live longer but his soul and his heart are saying no you're not so they're at conflict with each other which i'm inferring a lot from not we're not having dialogue but you can I'm getting this from, this is definitely a subjective take, because when it comes from, I think there's a destiny that comes with being a religious man that your work is never really done. When, when it comes to being a missionary or a, a man of God, you're always fighting, um, you're, you're always fighting the uphill battle. And um, I'm not trying to beat the religion in the people but it's definitely part of the bible where um, they were talking about uh, uh, John the Baptist uh, says in, in, in the text where he's like uh, you must pursue to you must pursue and, and, and win the race and the race is only finished when you die you know you have you have run the race now you get to relax you know which is heaven basically so I think that's what they were trying to do Run the good race, yes. Exactly, yeah. So I kind of, this is kind of what reminds me of that because he's definitely marching. I think he knows he's marching to his death, his final death, and he doesn't want to. Again, symbolizing the religious duty of also what, what uh, Jesus did in, um, when he, he knew he was going to death on a cross, basically. You know, it's it it does feel like that, and um, and so that's what I think of the Iraq scene. I know I put a lot of subjective things in there, but there's definitely a lot of symbolism in there you you could take from. You could analyze that scene and go for days about it. So that's interesting, because the first half of the movie is definitely slow. It's a it's the frog on the boiler, basically, the. The idea that the frog doesn't move because it 
I mean, if you put a frog on a boiler and it's already boiling, it will hop off. But if you put a frog on a boiler that's boiling up, he won't sense it's coming until it's too late. You know. Um, so that's what the first half is. And it builds up, it comes to a point, then it goes back down. It builds up, comes to a point, and goes back down. This is how the film is. It lets you breathe so you can take in what you just saw. It doesn't crank out scares every 20 seconds. You know, it, it, it doesn't do that. It lets the film breathe. Because um, and people think that's really boring. Like, no, it just lets you think about what you just saw. It lets you discuss in your own mind what's going on while the peaceful stuff is happening and you get to listen to what happens. And not only does it show scares, it puts you... Um, Oh yeah, jump scares are um, jump scares are equal to the pie in the face. They're very basic forms of comedy, um, and jump scares are the basic form of scare. Doesn't mean I don't like jump scares, but jump scares it, there has to be a payoff for a jump scare. There has to be a a reason, you know. There, it just can't be jump scares, you know, because The Exorcist has does have jump scares, but they're they're few and far between, and they're really effective at building tension. Sometimes when you expect a scare, it doesn't happen, and you're just wondering, why didn't I get the scare? Please, no. No, I don't think jump scares are comedy. I think, uh, I, I compare jump scares as the lowest form of scaring. Just like pie in the face is the lowest form of comedy. You know, it's, um, it's a basic gag, you know. Mm. It doesn't happen. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it happens all the time. Not just saying that a jump scare. There has to, sometimes payoff is better than no payoff, and it takes a real artist of suspense, like or or horror, to realize when when not to pull his punches and when to just go for it. Because there's timing to every kind of scare. You know, for example, I hate to say this, but I don't think Five Nights at Freddy's has good jump scares, but in my little defense of what of what they do. Oh, hey, Kevin, how's it going? And uh, for what little defense I have what they do, it does build up uh, the jump scare. So you could defend it that way, but its entire scare is jump scare. It's about, I don't want the jump scare. And if you're not scared of the jump scare, though, then it has nothing, you know. <laughs> hey, Kevin, I'm just, I'm into the, uh, I'm, I'm really into this already. I'm, um, this is a YouTube edit of, of it. So, so what I want to know is like um, the cinematography of this movie is fantastic. Uh, if you ever seen any scene from the movie, like um, it is one of the most well shot uh, movies of all time. And that's not an opinion. That is definitely for a fact. Oh man, that's kind of sucks. Uh, I hope you. I hope you're feeling better. I hope you didn't get uh, gassed up. <laughs> I hope they just checked your teeth and sent you on your way. <laughs> and so, what I mean by the, um, the so it goes to Iraq, to Georgetown, of uh, Washington, D.C. And that's where those steps are, by the way. You can see those steps in real life, and that'd be eerie to me, but I, that'd be kind of neat. And, um, so, at first, like, when, uh, you see, but you don't know this, but at the beginning of the movie, Reagan is actually messing with the, the Ouija board in the basement, where the laundry room is. Just a cleaning, nothing, nothing more. Oh, yeah, just, okay. Cool, cool, cool. You got, uh, you got a normal appointment. Awesome. <laughs> and, um... So they start hearing, the mother starts hearing noises in the attic. And uh, so she tells, and she's very rich because she lives in a, probably a three room, like a three story house that's wide enough to have dinner parties and get togethers, especially for her actor friends because she's an actress. And um, she plays an interesting part in that movie. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing that movie they were filming. Like what? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, going back to watching the film is, I mean, I've only seen it a few times, but I've, it's just so interesting that I kind of remember almost everything about it. 
to refresh myself. I watch React channels just to refresh myself. Hmm. So, um, so yeah, uh, she she has helpers and family, and and she knows the people from the uh, where she performs. She 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 gets along with them enough where she knows them, um, calls them by name, you know. So she's not just. Um, just some actress, you know. She's definitely well known um, around her colleagues, you know. And uh, not only that, she is divorced because uh, early on, er, early in the film, she starts having an argument with uh, the father over the phone, where the daughter hears it, and the daughter goes to her room, and like they're just she's yelling over the phone at this guy. It's obviously they did not get along, then that's why they divorced. It is very obvious. And, um, so she goes up into the attic to check out the rat problem because they set up for traps. She's like, oh, there's no trap there. And all of a sudden the, um, the flame, the flame suddenly goes, flames out. And she gets, uh, jump scared by the flame. And then the guy behind him is like, hey, what are you doing up here? He's like, don't do that. And like, don't, don't, ah. It's like, <laughs> she gets really annoyed at him. And it's like. Because you see, if if that if that guy wasn't there, she would have been scared of just a candle, <laughs> and that kind of puts it out of her mind of oh well, it's not a big deal, because this guy came along, you know, it, an excuse not to worry about it, because your mind always wants to distract you from the disturbing stuff if um, if 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 you can, you know, it, it gives an excuse. And, uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the sound, oh yeah, the sound is amazing. It's, um, uh, so, pretty much in some scenes, like, you'll hear a loud noise cover up what people are saying based on what the, who, where the character is instead of, um, instead of what you want to hear. So, it lets you, um, be absorbed more in the, uh, in the in the moments and and from each character, uh, it, it it doesn't pull you out because you're hearing something you don't want to like a, like I want to hear that but you wouldn't be able to hear it either. So it's it's for, for for example the mother goes by the church and sees Father Karras, which I remember by the way. Father Karras is a uh, the 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 other priest not and. Uh, you know he's uh, he's seen her around the uh, college where they're filming, and she sees him at the at the church, and just passing by, and you can't hear what they're talking about because there's a uh, there's a loud vehicle going by, and so therefore she misses part of the conversation, and she's like whatever they're talking, I'll move on with my life, you know it's um, and sometimes the sound design will be like most of the time there's no music, so you hear everything. So you don't get, uh, it does a lot for making you believe you are there. It's sort of like in Dark Souls. There's not really music. You just hear the footsteps of your, your character and the wailing of monsters. You know, it's sort of the same way where, where basically it's, you hear everything that the character hears. Which absorbs you into the world of... This little girl slowly being turned into this movie monster that really is looks not is inhuman but sounds inhuman, you know. They really do a good job with that, with the sound design from just letting you be absorbed in the movie itself, um, especially with the camera work. And uh, it can definitely be um, what they show, like in the dream sequence, that they uh, they give you that the best jump scare in horror. I just want to say horror because, like I said before, The Exorcist is not really a horror movie, as described by the director. We, we didn't make a horror movie. We made a movie based on a book that was suspenseful 
it's more of a thriller is what they said. But people have called it a horror movie. And to me, horror is, uh, or thriller and suspense movies are, I think, are a subgenre of horror. That would be my take on it. But again, that's my take, you know. I mean, if someone's argue that, that's fine. No, that's just, that's what I think. It's sort of like um, how I think um, heavy metal is a subgenre of rock and roll. <laughs> like, okay, sure. That's not here or there. And um, speaking of camera work, they do a lot of hard cuts. They'll go boom, 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 boom. Like, when they go from one scene to another, they there's a hard cut. They don't fade in or fade out. Like, it's a hard cut. Boom, on to the next scene. Because uh, it feels like that you are being pushed to the next scene that could be considered bad, but... In this case, I think it's a good idea because um, you don't feel like, when you feel like you I don't know about what's happening in this scene, you go to the next scene and they explain something, you know, because not everything is shown, some of it is told, which sometimes the imagination is much more effective at scaring you than what's happening on screen. Uh, for example, um, uh, the mother comes home one night and sees that um, something is wrong near her house where these long stairs are at night and she comes home and the lights are flickering and those are where the extra scenes of the faces are but eh, whatever and she sees that the window is open there's a gust of wind and she covers her daughter up and so after that she goes downstairs and they tell her well um, that the director died and uh, it fell down the stairs and she gets really upset about it the mom is just crushed and and so you're like and then if you, if you didn't get it from that scene alone um, there's another scene where a detective comes along and finds out that and explains that um, there's there's no way a, a something like a normal human being could have done what he did to that to that guy because its head was spun completely around and pushed out of that window and so it was done that night so uh oh so it's a very interesting thing to, to hear about, but you never see it. Because the imagination does all the work for you. Now, um, let's, uh, especially one of the heart cuts. So, let's talk about that. Code. So, this enters Father Karras. And, um, he's definitely one of the... He is definitely, I think, the protagonist of the movie. Like, uh, the antagonist is definitely the demon, but... Uh, the the protagonist is definitely Father Karras because he has the most growth when it comes to being a, a character. You get to know him the most. He's definitely the the hero of the film. Um, he he is losing his faith and he's losing his mother because she is losing her mind and losing her spirit, losing her health, and um, and so because his father is a Catholic and losing his faith that. You know, um, he, he feels like that this shouldn't be happening to his mother because he has a close relationship with his mom because they are Greek. And so therefore, um, that's inferred that Greek have a strong family connections. And, uh, and so, oh man, I, I, I lost my train of thought. Dang it. <laughs> mm, excuse me. I, I hiccup. So, um, if she turns ill one night, um, his mom does, and, and she's kind of going in this mental hospital. This mental hospital is terrible. It's terrible. Like, it looks like, um, like, uh, a Dark Knight, um, it looks like a movie set for Saw. You know, it's like, uh, or if you ever saw Jacob's Ladder. 
it kind of looks like that in the, the mental asylum. And I'm like, uh, it's, it's kind of gross in there. And everybody is just wants attention all the time. And you can tell they're struggling. These, these people are not well. But they're not. Some of them could be dangerous. You don't know. And, um, and they put this sweet old lady who just, you know, can't take care of herself in this. And then the brother puts her in this uh, mental hospital. And he's like. And the brother and the son is like, what? Like, we got to... The, the, so, um, Father Karras, which is the son, says, we got to get her out of there. And and um, the mom's brother is like, where do you want her to go? I'm like, if you're rich, yeah. We, we could put her in a real hospital, but we can't. We don't have the money. And then you find out a few scenes later that she is dead. Um... And if and the father Karras feels so much guilt over that death, and he's he's as you see through uh, some visual storytelling that father Karras is a boxer, and um, and then he go he trains he runs, um, you see him exercising, you know he's 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 beating up a bag, you know, either he's doing it to let off stress or. And not only that, so one night he just feels so bad that his friend has to come by and and really like this and it really does show that these priests are human in in, in this movie because they're drinking, they're smoking, they're saying all these things that aren't really you associate with Catholic priests, you know, because uh, they're treating a lot of people with problems instead of saying. God this, God that all the time. You know, it's um, it's a very real thing. You know, you know, you know what I mean. Like um, religious talk, and all that stuff. It's sort of like when you watch a show and anyway, it's like, oh man, he's getting huge. He has twenty percent power and all that stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's not how real people talk. <laughs> like, okay. So, I don't know why I can go into anime references for those, but you know, it's it's sort of the. Uh, if you make your characters have humanistic dialogue, it actually makes it a lot better. So that's 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 all I'm saying. And so he helps him. This this friend helps him in the bed, and he's like, "You should, like, you should sleep on it, pretty much." And so he's like, he he takes away his booze, and then he he wakes up his, and before he leaves. He's like, "Stealing is a sin," and and, and he just like. I think he's, I see him, like, smile back at him. He's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> he's like, I know. <laughs> like, you can tell they're friends because they let each other get away with all that stuff. You know, they sort of like, um, if your brother calls you an idiot, it's like, yeah, sure, uh-huh. <laughs> I know you really love me inside. So, um, he has this dream where, again, the audio is spot on with uh, it being silent and you can barely hear it audible. And you see that white face. The white face of Bazuzu. And that's the big jump scare. Because like, it's not a loud noise. It's just a semi-second flash of of this, this face. And it's like... And it's the most disturbing thing you'll ever see. And it's not even that disturbing. It's just disturbing because... You can tell the, the it's the intent of that face that this uh, I think this demon is giving him nightmares. I don't know. It seems that way. It's implied that way, but because in the beginning of the dream, it shows the necklace that Father Marin is um, got from the um, got from Iraq, and then it shows a clock from Iraq, and then it shows the mother and. His mother's calling to him from the subway. It's like I can't, I I can't get to you, you know, and like and so he, he tries to run for the mother and she goes down into the subway, meaning I think that I think that symbolism means that she is going down to death, and she is saying goodbye, you know, or it could be that it infers that she is going to hell, because I think that's what they're pointing at, because um. As I said before, like, when it comes to biblical references, 
which I think they might do a little bit in this movie, where um, when if you want to know what a, what a good place and a bad place is in the Bible, if they say go up, like for example, if they say go up to Israel, then Israel is a good place at that time. You know, if, if they say like go down to Egypt, the down means it is a bad place, don't do it. And she goes down into the subway. So basically, it's a bad place. It's hell. I think that's what you, they, they want you to infer with that, with, with, with that subway scene. And, um, and, and so, oh yeah, um, Reagan messing with the Ouija board. I need to go back to that. Um, so, so as with any good, like, demon, you don't call yourself something bad because no one ever played with you. It's sort of like a the the clown of Pennywise wants to lure you in. Wants to lure kids in, so it looks like a clown. So kids will come forward. And uh, this is sort of the same thing. It, it the the demon calls himself Captain Howdy, or demons. You know, since it takes more than one demon to possess a body. And um, and so uh, Reagan starts playing with it. And when they when they try to set the mom to play, it's like no 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 no. I want the kid. I want the kid. Obviously, it's like, well, you don't want me to play then, says the mom. And then the the Reagan's like, oh no, it's Captain Howdy. He does not want you to play. And so, and so like, yeah, we we all know it's bad news. It's pretty much like the, it's almost like, cliche. Uh, when it comes to Ouija boards nowadays, but this is where the movie that started it all with, with the Ouija board summoning is The Exorcist. So, uh, let's see. So, <laughs> oh, so pretty much like, um, so Reagan, while, uh, uh, after, like, I think it's before or after checking out the rats in, in the attic with, um, the bomb checks the, um, checks the attic, um, the, the bed of, uh, Reagan says that, uh, Reagan says, I was shaking all night, I couldn't sleep. And so, and then afterwards, um, <laughs> it starts to really shake and the mom is, like, trying to balance it out at first she's trying to get on both sides like oh it's still shaking so she takes the daughter off the bed you know which was like uh oh so we need to do something about that and so they take her to the doctor because there's obviously nothing wrong with the bed because there, there's no way that they wouldn't look at the bed but I don't know if, I don't know if they should have put that in like have somebody look at the bed it's like oh, there's nothing wrong with the bed it's it's just been lifted off its foundation. Maybe they should have pinned the bed to the to to the floor. I don't know. Like nailed it to the floor. Like this will stop it from bouncing. Which wouldn't do anything, but still, I'm just saying. Like that that would have been interesting to see. <laughs> so uh, let's see. So they they bring her to the doctor. They bring Reagan to the doctors. And Reagan's like 13 years old, which is said by her during hypnosis. So it's very interesting that she's on the cusp of being a being a teenager, you know, growing up in in sexuality. Because oh boy, we'll, we we will get to that later. Um, yeah. So I've been over this. All right, next. Yeah, you can even turn my pages because I made notes. Like a nerd. So, um, so it's pretty much how the mom is a, um, I don't know if it was like, uh, she's definitely a atheist, the mom is, so that's why she doesn't bring the daughter to a priest. You know, it's, it's, it's obvious, you know. I don't think anybody really would at first, because what if it could be explained by science, because we have bipolar disorders, we have, uh, um, we have... Multi personalities, you know, in, in people who say they are, or, you know, 
uh, people could be depressed and act different ways, you know, and so it could be explained. And they explore all the scientific aspects they can, especially with uh, the stages of possession. Um, with um, with with Reagan, you know, because uh, when she goes for her first visit, she cusses him out and says like, uh, you know, stay away from my private area, you son of a, you know, like oh, I've never, like, and they even asked the mom like, does your daughter use profanity? <laughs> and like, uh, no, because <laughs> she said this, I'm like, oh, oh no, this. This isn't good. Like it's it's not good. So they were um, after explanation for this thing happening, and so if this if the stages continue. Um, there was there was the, the the now she's bouncing on her own bed. It's not just um, it's not the bed anymore. Now she is the one bouncing on the bed. Like. You can tell this thing is now entering her body and it burns, as, as, as she said. And she is yelling out for somebody to save her, her, her mom, because that's the mom's only one around. And, and so the rest of the doctors are coming in. And she is um, flipping her head on against that table, which actually um, hurt her neck in that scene. And not only did it hurt her neck in that scene, and she's not doing it herself. It's actually a string system that's making her do it, and she said she almost, she could have broken her neck. So it's like, oh, okay. I'm like, you guys went all the way on this thing, didn't you? I mean, it's just unbelievable what, what they've done in this movie. And, um... And so, like they hit, they hit, they hit that thing hard. And so the, and so get back to the movie logic where, the doctor comes in, he's like he's ready to explain something to her, and she stands up, all of a sudden and like slaps him down, like she must be like strong in order to to slap somebody enough. A grown man, this little girl hits this grown man to the ground. I mean, it's just like. Oh, she's she's apparently like super strong. I'm like, oh, okay, so that reinforces the idea of uh, that he could, she could throw somebody out a window and down the stairs and um, and snap his head all the way around. Which, by the way, in this scene, uh, I think the demon mocks this idea. Because he, he, the demon is known for mocking people when it comes to Karis' mother, when it comes to the health of Father Marin, when it comes to the mom, like, just taking over the daughter. And then her friend, who, who he broke the neck of, and she turned her neck all the way around. I think this is mocking the, um, the way she killed uh, the director. You know, it's, um, it's a... I, I don't know if that's part of it, but it's definitely something to consider. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, this this thing is vicious and brutal and manipulative. So, so the doctors are continuing doing tests, and they're like, I think it's time to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> like, okay. So they go to the psychiatrist, and, um, and so they try this one psychiatrist, which is not... Father Karras, because he is also a psychiatrist, but they don't try him first. Mm. This doctor has um, has Reagan under um, under hypnosis, and he even says like you um, you and this other being inside are um, are under my control because you are both hypnotized. And so he thinks it's safe, you know, He and starts asking the uh, Reagan questions. And he's like, uh, do you like the thing inside of me? She's like, no. Do you want it gone? She's like, yes. It's like, um, and then he was like, I'm talking to the thing inside Reagan now. Because he's able to um, reach in the brain, you know. And so he's like, 
And when he does speak to it for the first time, uh, Reagan, Ray, Reagan, Reagan, um, uh, excels this foul smell for like, and the mother like, it's, it's this gross smell, and um, and at this time, um, Reagan's uh, lips are so are so chapped that uh, it's cracking her lips and with blood on it, and you can tell like uh, something is wrong with the body. And it's like, oh my gosh, she looks terrible. <laughs> she looks terrible, and the makeup effects again, like they went all out on this movie. It is, it is something to behold, and. Hang on, I gotta move this thing. It doesn't burn up as much. Hope, 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 hope you guys are, are are doing well with this. I hope I'm doing somewhat of a good job. Um, and so, under the spell of even under the spell of hypnotism, it this thing proves its strength and mental fortitude as well because it gets out of the trance. And grabs this uh, psychologist by the balls and brings him to the ground. And like, these things are like, oh my gosh. And it must be so bad that the guy can't fight back against this little girl all of a sudden. It's like, geez. And it's definitely, a lot of things are sexual about this. Um, about Pazuzu possessing this little girl. And because uh, he's she's always doing something sexual whenever um, the mom walks in and talks about like like because I wonder if it's um, uh, the demon is mocking um, Reagan as, as, as well like a um, like she's coming on to be 13 she's gonna be um, trying to make her seem like she's sexually active, but she's not. Or, like, doing something else. Like, mm, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just very interesting to look at it from that angle of, it's just, she's, this demon is mocking everything they hold dear. And wants to tear it down. And spread fear and doubt and... And all this other stuff. So they bring in Father Karras. And because they're like, we've ran out of ideas. The doctors have run out of ideas. They run every test. She is surrounded by a circle of doctors. And they're like, we have no clue what's going on. And so, um, and so one of them suggests, what about exorcisms? Well, if someone thinks they're possessed, because they're not going to say they're possessed because they're scientific doctors. Why would you ever say someone is possessed? They're not going to say that. And so, um, they suggest that the mental state is, uh, she thinks she is possessed. Well, what if we give that mental state to her by a priest performing an exorcism? Then, therefore, they'll think that the being is gone, therefore, mentally healthy again. And they're like, okay. And she goes, okay, that, okay, I guess that makes sense. So Father Karras enters the scene. And he's still doing with his faith and all that stuff and doesn't want to deal with the spiritual stuff in, anymore. I mean, it's definitely through his attitude he doesn't want to do it. You know, he doesn't say it explicitly that he doesn't want to do it, but you can tell his attitude is like, I'm, I'm trying to get out of this business and you, you want to drag me back in, lady. And so, um, and that's definitely through his attitude. And so, um, he investigates Reagan. And so, um, while investigating Reagan, he, um, um, during the first time, he is just talking to, to, um, to the demon, which is fully taken over now. And now it has scars all over the body. There's, um, like, it, it, she, she looks like she hasn't had sleep in decades. Wrinkles, scars, 
fully chapped lips and looked like she had like claw marks on 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 her lips. You know, it's it's an insane image. And that's what um it's still not the scary fish she was known for. And so um and so he starts talking to it um and now it was like who are you? He's like I'm the devil. Now now kindly undo these straps. He's like if you're the devil, why don't you undo the straps? You know. He was like uh that's not very much use of my power. Like I'm not going to do that. And I wonder if I wonder if he's waiting. Uh, like he definitely, it seems like this demon is waiting for the right time. And so he talks about um. So they start talking again and having this kind of actually normal conversation a, a little bit. And so this, so it starts to mock people again because um, he um, the demon mentions Karis's mother. You know in a one and another famous line from the movie. It's like, if you want to leave a message with your mother, your mother is in there with us. If you, if you want to leave a message, I'll make sure that she gets it. Inferring that uh, the dream might be real, that you know, since this demon comes from hell, so therefore she is in hell, and therefore she can leave her a message. You know, it's like it is devious, and so he's like, oh yeah, uh, do you know her maiden name? And instead of answering, she does the pea soup throw up, which is also green, you know, like sticking with the theme of green as eagles evil. And, um, and, um, so he was like, I'm, I'm out of here. And so to start asking the mom questions about, like, I don't have enough evidence, like, I don't know if I can get it, because if we're, we're kind of going nowhere. And so he asked the uh, the girl a question, like, he asked the mom, I mean, Karis asked the mom about what the, about does, he, uh, does Reagan know about my mom's past? And he's like, no, like, I knew just a few days ago, but I didn't tell her, you know. I was like, oh, well, good night then. He just leaves and, like, but still not enough for him to be convinced, I don't think, because she, Reagan could have heard it offhand from the mother without the without uh, the mom knowing. So yeah, maybe who knows. So so he goes back and said like you need to you need uh, speaking another language. You need to be able to um, see it doing things. Like you gotta have proof, you know. And so he comes back and. One of the things he says when he when he gets back is like, uh, "What a wonderful day for an exorcism." And Father Karras is confused. He's like, uh, "What do you mean by that? Would you like that?" And he's like, "I was like, oh yeah, it would bring us together." It was like, um, "Wouldn't that separate you two? I thought, "Oh no, no, I'm not talking about, not talking about me and Reagan. I'm talking about you and me." And it's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> like, that's kind of eerie. And so when he sits down, he opens a drawer, and um, he's like, "Like, can you do that again? Can you open that drawer again?" And he's like, "In time." I said, "No, right now." No, pretty much. Karis is baiting this thing, and but uh, Pazuzu's is not falling for it. She's, uh, he says, "In time, I will. I will." You know, like, uh, and then here's the thing: it kind of does in time like um and here across my other theory of i think pazuzu wants a confrontation with father marin because it sort of gives a reason why um he um again this is a subjective take when it comes to um when it comes to the exorcist because i think that because i think he the Pazuzu wants the um, the confrontation with Father Marin, and uh, which was set up in the beginning scene of Iraq, I think, because it's his destiny to meet this thing, and I think, um, and so the reason why I think that is because um, he gets out, 
a bottle, a small bottle of something, and the uh, the demon gets really upset, gets really concerned. He's like, "What's that? What do you got there?" And and uh, Karis is like, uh, "It's holy water." And he's like, um, keep that away from me. And, and he starts to spray it over like a, um, like a priest would, like saying, Hail Mary full of grace. Like, choo choo. And it's like, and Pazuzu acts very violently toward it. He's like, ah, it burns. I'm like, ah. And starts spouting this language you don't know. And it's like, oh, okay. And he starts to record that. You know, it's like, mm, I got this. And. It's like I got, I like I got it on tape. I've seen it move stuff. I've seen it grow up. I've it talks in another voice, and so, um, and so when he gets down, he's like, um, he talks to the mom and says, like, I, I said I had holy water, and he acts very violently. He's like it's just tap water, and people are like tap water, which doesn't excuse for an exorcism. And like, yeah, it's true, but here's the thing, though. I think the uh, the reason why it did all that was to get an exorcism. Because the way it had a conversation with, with Karis is because of... Uh, uh, is because it wants an exorcism. And... Um, I, don't, I don't, Maybe he was speaking about, not Karis, but Father Marin saying... It will bring us closer together, you know, because um, that's what I think of the current proceedings of, of of the movie. In fact, it I think it fakes reacts to the uh, to the holy water, and then talks backwards. Yeah, because here's the thing: it's not a foreign language; it's, it talks backwards, and they go to a tape and they reanalyze it and says. Yeah, uh, to a to a sound editor. I think it's his friend that he was speaking with earlier. It's like, yeah, um, there's a. Uh, I said it's English. It's like Karis is like it's English. It's like yeah, it's um, it's speaking it's speaking backwards. Here, listen. So they go, and they um, and they they click it on. And it's saying like, like uh, saying like you hear a bunch of voices saying leave it to leave the girl to die. We are no one. Like, um, and all this other weird sounds and roars and, and so, like, yeah, this is enough. <laughs> and so they try to get exorcism and they, and they get up and finally enough they do get approved. And, um, so they're like, who should we get? I mean, who, cause no one's really experienced in the, in that part of the United States that are, um, or probably anyone in the United States who is familiar with exorcisms. And they're like, well, what about Father Marin? And so that's why they had the scene at the beginning in order to call him in. Every road leads to this room in Georgetown, Washington, D.C. This one room. And speaking of that room, um, all of the scary stuff happens in the room, as it should, or, or even in the house, you know. And it just builds tension. Then you go somewhere else. Then you go back to the house. And then when you go back to the house, you know the room's going to be coming up. And that's where the dread comes from, when you when you go into that room. And it's like, I don't want to go in back in that room. I don't want to go back in that room. But then it's like, when the, when it ends, you're like, I want to go back in the room. And then you realize, oh crap, it's building up to the room again. I don't I don't want to go in that room. <laughs> it's like, oh. You see, it's, it's kind of a conflict of interest, but people have a morbid curiosity of what's going on. You know. I call it the Lovecraft effect. Where it's basically, no matter how dire situation is, or what you think it is, you're going to want to investigate something that could possibly kill you. So anyways, in the whole um, stages of, uh, hmm, of, of, of what's going on, uh... I need to get my place back, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, the the tap water and all that stuff. Faking it, I think, to get people to find an exorcism. And then, I think the final push to get the exorcism, like, 
like clarified, like um, or, or or to get it through was basically um, Father Karras is shown like inside the room again where Reagan is asleep, thank goodness, and the scare is just help me at shit on the body, which I think was done by the uh, by the cross that Reagan used earlier to. Basically, like I, I don't want to say it because it is far too disturbing. But she pretty much uses it as a way to mock um, womanhood, b basically, and to mock the Christian religion at the same time, because of, um, and so, I think a way to punish the uh, punish Reagan, the demon does self mutilates herself. And it's, uh, oh, it is, it is very disturbing. And, um, so I think she wrote Help Me on her body, and, and, the, and the scratches actually, um, uh, showed up. And probably when, um, they're changing her or something, because she did, she doesn't move from that bed anymore. And so, um, probably found the words Help Me on the on the body when they're like uh probably changing her to go to the bathroom or um or to you know just changing the sheets because they're dirty now with green gunk <laughs> and uh it's with a so curious it's like yeah yeah okay okay this has gone far enough we we definitely need an exorcism which uh curious is against because it could do more harm than good and i'm like yeah you need to be sure. Because if you do it and it ends up not being, it could be... It could hurt more than it helps. So, yeah. I can see that. Oh, man. So... So, the famous scene. Um, it gets approved. Father Marin arrives in front of the house. As you can see the scene here, he gets out of the car with his bag. And he looks up at the room. Which is, that's the room right there, shining out. And it's like, oh my gosh. And when he arrives, the, the demon knows. And it, it looks out the window. I mean, it doesn't, it's not at the window. It, from the bed, it looks out the window. And by the way, I'm scaring myself right now. Because <laughs> this is, just describing it, it's very, very frightening. Because um, this is one of the movies that, probably still gets me a, a, a little bit, you know? But man, it's, it's, it's very, yeah, it's, 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 it's very well with its atmosphere, it's cinematography, it's lighting, it's, um, acting, uh, you feel from everybody involved. It's a very character-driven movie, which is why the scares work. Because if you don't like the characters, you're not going to care about what happens to them or um, what they're like without these horrifying things happen to them. You know, it's not just a show of special effects and and boo horror. You know, <laughs> you know. Um, so and so he um, imagery is top notch. Imagery is top notch is what I'm saying. Like, there's a lot of wonderful shots in this movie that are like so iconic in filmmaking in general not just in the horror genre but filmmaking in general like if you wanna like you could do a class on filmography on the exorcist itself I mean it's just blatant with so much symbolism so much uh, deliberate placement of objects uh, characters and in, in, in situations and sometimes it's just there sometimes it's deliberate but that's kind of what makes it good because you don't know if it's uh, if it's there for no reason or not because it's just an ordinary object or it could be something else um, but yeah so so again Father Marin arrives he's inside the house and he gets called out like he the the 
possessed Reagan calls out Marin you know like this long stretched out like demonic roar that has Marin the word Marin in it you can tell like this thing wants to fight Marin and he knows and it's I think like even though it, it's a very humanistic quality for this demon to do this because not only does it want a battle it because th this kind of supports my theory of it wants a battle because it calls him out and and it's sort of psychologically building himself up I, I don't know um, the demon is building itself up to pump itself up like a football player does before a big game to face the opponent they are pumping them there he's it, it's like I am I'm ready to take on the world basically you know kind of thing going on that's the impression I get from from, from that um, and so um, man I'm, I'm, I'm gonna lost my own thoughts now <laughs> I've been going on for a while and it's hard to keep up my thoughts so but so so basically the um, as Marin actually pumps himself up as well, and even before that, um, uh, the, the the mom is like, "Do you need some alcohol? <laughs> like, do you need some brandy? Like, and the priest is like, uh, the doctor says I shouldn't. I bet that's because of his like heart medication. But he says, "Thank God my will is weak," is what he says, and I'm like, "That's a good line. It really humanizes the um, the actor." Because, uh, or, or Father Marin, because it's, uh, it's like, yeah, it's like, I, I, I need this. It will definitely help out. <laughs> it will help out my mental state. And, um, so there, uh, so the whole thing is very humanizing. So they do the pumping up, they, they give this explanation of what happens during the exorcism before it even happens. It builds up even more so what has been built up through the entire film, which is the exorcism in itself. And he is the exorcist. And Father Karras is there, it is his assistant. And so Father Marin explains that he's pumping them up. You know, he's saying, like, no matter what he says, you don't listen, he'll deceive you psychologically, he'll enter your mind, he'll make you believe the things you want to, you don't want to believe. You know, and um, so this other goes into he can he uh, I think this uh, this is who can read surface level thoughts, like thoughts that pass by your mind, because what's going through his mind right now is the uh, not only the exorcism but his failure at being a son t t uh, to his mother, and so this I think this demon is reading his surface level thoughts as the exorcism goes on. And so um, they go up there. It's still wailing, pumping itself up. And when he, and then when they walk in, it's like we're both ready. They 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 both have that look. And so and they start. And this is where the budget goes wild. Basically, these are the money shots of the film. This is what people remember about this film. It is probably one of the most viewed scenes in movie history when it comes to horror like um uh it start it's and it still starts out small and grows too big you know it doesn't just go ball um uh, boss of the wall as as it were and um like the first thing is like um they start to uh, he goes for uh, the demon goes for like words first, like to to try to try to make them stop. You know, it's like when they when they bless God, he's like like the f him, like f the guy, and and so like um and so like Father Marin does this really like if this were an action movie, it'd be kind of awesome, but you know it's like be silent, and he throws holy water on on. On Bazuzu's, like, uh, I mean, Reagan's body. And he goes, eh! I'm like, yeah, take that, jerk demon. 
<laughs> it's just an awesome line. It's like, F them, be silent, holy water. Ah! <laughs> it's very, um, it's just, it's like, yeah, finally, someone put this thing in its place. Because this guy is professional. Like, um, he gets spit on, doesn't lose his place. You know, he just wipes it off and goes, and he's still talking. The guy's like, mentally, he's good. Mentally, he's solid as a rock. But physically, not so much. <laughs> and Father Karras is, you can see, he's so concerned. He is so concerned during the exorcism. Uh, he, 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 you can tell from his eyes that he's not sure. Because this thing is upping its game every... Every, like, 20 seconds, it keeps doing other things. Like, it will shake the bed. It will rise the bed. It will, like, shut on its tongue. Um, shape shift a little bit. Like, it shows its real face for a second. Like, it's like it's drawing it out. But then when they're on the right track, when Father Marin is just being a boss during the exorcism, uh, he starts to cough because his body can't take the exorcism and he starts to feel the, his, his age and um, and so a um, Reagan laughs at him because of his you know because he's so old you know um, you, you can tell he's like <laughs> and I'm like dang it you almost got him you almost you're almost there and so, like, as a way to retaliate, he's like, I cast you out! And like, yeah, I, the, the demon got you good on that one. But, so, like before, um, he, it does remove the straps itself and float, and float. And Father Karras is like, I don't believe this. I don't believe this at all. Like, no, it's not happening. You know, you can see it in his eyes, but he's but with Father Mayor in there, he definitely has the support he needs to repeat what he says and say the lines and all this stuff. You can tell he's trying his hardest. You know, he's the uh, he's the hero of the film because he he comes through when he's needed during the time of the exorcism. But he has his limits. Like every human being does. Especially with um, him loving his mom like he did. You can tell he loved his mom more than probably his faith. You know, and uh, which is a uh, big mistake in the religious community. <laughs> uh, because um, it's God, family, country. So, um, and that's not a hit against families or anything like that, you know, when it comes to religion. It's just that. Uh, in a religious uh, sort of community like anything like that like God is the most important thing even going for your family you know that doesn't mean you ignore your family you know that's or anything like that I'm just I'm just saying that uh, that's um, that was his problem when it comes to the exorcism because um, when they they say we, we, we need a break <laughs> oh wait I can't get to that yet Oh no, because during the exorcism, like, um, Karis gets, like, pushed down to the ground when he, when he tries to tie him, when he tries to tie Reagan up again after getting free. And it, and so the whole room starts shaking and they, and they get interrupted. And there's this beautiful shot of Reagan reaching his, um, uh, reaching her hand to the sky as, as this demon. And you see the Bazuzu statue behind uh, behind Reagan, and it's a beautiful shot. It's a, it's one of the scariest things you'll ever see. It's 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 like oh my gosh, it is it is so eerie. Like, um, but it's a really good shot. And so um, and so they say like um, we're gonna take a break. <laughs> so, okay, we're gonna take a break. In the, in the extended edition, uh, they have this conversation on the steps, but I forget the conversation on the steps. I haven't seen that in forever. I think it's about why does this happen? And he's like, 
and he gives him like the Gandalf answer, so 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 God can show His glory, pretty much. And it's not, and terrible things come to all kinds of people. We're not special because we're we happen to be priests, and and they, it happens to be a little girl in there, you know. Um, I believe that's it, but I could be wrong. I probably am wrong, so take that with a grain of salt. And so um, they go into uh, it again, where Father Karras goes in there first, because he is a psychiatrist, so he's trained as a doctor as well. And so he goes in and checks on Reagan, and it, and it sort of gives him the illusion that he's looking at his mother. And he's like, oh. I was like, I don't like that. And so he just continues to go on. He shakes his head a little bit and ends up being Reagan again. And so, and Reagan starts to speak as, as the dead mother. Like, um, and this gets to Karis a lot. Because family is like, you don't mess with family, you know. And so it's like, um, he's like, you're not my mother. But what's to stop Reagan from still doing it, you know? And so um, he's he just he just can't he can't take it anymore. He's like, you're not my mother. Like, and even Father Marin's like comes in. He's like, don't listen. Like you're, and like he seems to be compromised. You know, he he can't do it anymore. And so he goes down and waits downstairs, and he has this conversation with the with the mother I can't remember her name I'm sorry I want to call her the mother and um, and the mother asks him is the exorcism over and Kara says no and and then she says is he going to is she going to die and he looks and he he puts his head up and he puts his head to the side and then looks straight into her and says no like he's infirming to himself like and he finally I, he, I think he has this revelation about himself and he and uh, it, it's sort of him I think it's implied that he finds his faith that or he wants to find his faith and in order to find his faith and to get it stronger again he has to go back upstairs and finish the fight you know, because not only that, this shows him off as being the boxer he is too. Because he has a, he was also a boxer in college. Um, I, I believe, or he he has kind of boxing career because he has boxing pictures in his little one room apartment, which is pfft, terrible looking, by the way. And um, and so, this is very of a boxer mentality, where you lose a round. You forget about it and you go back out there to fight again. And you know, it, it's it's um the only way to pick yourself back up is to fight, you know. You you can't can't lay down. And especially when it comes to if you're a religious man fighting against evil, you know, because when it comes to oh Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The skin, yeah, yeah, the skin, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I didn't mention that earlier on, Ed. Well, welcome in. Um, I'm just talking about the, uh, the, the final part here. And um, sorry, I didn't notice you earlier, but yeah, that freaked me out too. That's probably one of the scariest things put on the screen because it's an, it's either written from uh, the inside of the belly. Or from the, uh, or it's written by the cross. I think it was written by the cross. It was etched in because uh, that's what healed skin looks like. If you were to rub, uh, if you were to put a sharp thing on your uh, skin, you know, and crosses are very, are you know, are very sharp, especially crucifixes. Uh, so, so anyways, um, it's like I said, he's a, and to a boxer. The only way to um, get back up, you have to get back up again. You know, you, you, uh, you have to fight again, you know. 
You get your teeth knocked out one time, you still got to get up and do it again. And you have to fight in order to... And he knows that, that that's how he wants to treat his faith. He, his faith is up there in that room. And he has to go get it. He has to face it. And he has to finish the fight. Like a boxer would. You know, it's, it's a very athletic thing to do. You know. And um, so he goes back up there and finds that everything is real quiet. And Reagan is at the end of the bed. Not tied up. And... Uh, and he finds Father Marin, like, face down on the bed. Like, leaning against it. And as he goes to check him out, he doesn't want this to happen. Because you kind of feel sorry for this guy. And after his heroic moment he had downstairs, you know, this is, again, the demon mocks everything they believe in. And he tries to rescue Father Marin... You know, giving him a um, uh, emergency CPR, and he gets desperate, punching the uh, punching as hard as he can on the on this belly, trying to get him alive. And he is so stressed out right now that he thought he had hope, but it was torn away from him again. You know, and the this demon just laughs at his attempt to save Father Marin, and therefore is destiny. Is, is fulfilled in, in, in Father Marin as he dies facing the facing evil as was um, as in the beginning of the movie when he faced when he looked at the statue of of, of Pazuzu you know I think that it, it was he knew he was marching to his death but he still did it anyway that's why he got his last drink in that's why he he didn't want to be involved in exorcism anymore. Not in a literal sense, I don't think, but for a physical reason. You know, he wanted to be relaxed, uh, missionary. But there's in the field of missionary work, that's not how it goes. You know, you... you uh, so, when it comes to... So... Uh, Father Karras is so upset that he grabs... He's, he's just had enough. He says... He he, um, he grabs, like, Reagan's body that is, that is possessed. And he starts, like, strangling and punching this little girl. You know, I mean, it's a demon, but it's still a little girl's body. And, and like, and so he has an idea in this middle of this... Middle of this wrestling, he has an idea in his head, like, you take me. This... And, um, so this... Somehow this he forces it out as this necklace from Iraq is torn from his which is the same one in the dream that he had. You know. And and it falls down and af, symbolizing that it is transferred bodies. And you can see the green in his eyes as like Reagan is now completely healed of all the scars that she was well, not all the scars, but definitely, like, looks normal again. Like, how a normal girl would be after, like, a day without showering, pretty much. You know, so, um... And he seems to be, like, he's gonna kill this little girl, actually. He's like, uh-oh, he's gonna continue to do what he did with the demon in him. But no, he takes enough self-control. He gets his, uh... And then jumps out the window to his death. Falling down the same stairs that the other guy fell down and broke his neck. This stairs has killed two people in this movie. Jeez, man. And and then his friend comes by as, as an act of, like, I think as an act of God, you know. And uh, comes down, and it's the same friend who helped him out earlier, helped him in the bed. You know, as the same person who's been helping out the mother as well, recommending Father Karras you know, has been there for a long time uh, with this guy. And he is so sad to see his friend, Father Harris, go. And he, um, I'm, I'm probably just going over the movie, but it's, it's just important to know what these characters are feeling at the time. And so, and so he gives his last confession and blesses his body. And his, his race is also done. He defeated the demon, 
by defeating himself. You know, and therefore finding his faith led him to die. Which is which is why it's a bittersweet ending to the movie, because you know that the demon is defeated, but at at the cost of two men. But this little girl will live. And the demon is defeated. I don't know if he'll ever come back, but for now it's gone. And uh, one of the, really one of the best parts is that um, the friend comes by and I think is now renewed in his faith more than he than it ever was. And uh, because of what's going on. And so he he, um, he goes to visit the family after the exorcism. And they're packing up. They're out of that house. <laughs> like, yeah, we're going to get out of here. <laughs> we're, we're definitely, we are out of here. And uh, in fact, the helpers are like, we're not, we're not going with you. We, we, um, and one of the, I think one of the helpers is like, I quit. <laughs> Like, this has been too much for me. And if it happens again, I'm out of here. So I'm just going to quit while I'm ahead. I said, yeah, that, that's fair. Because <laughs> I think that's a natural response. And so um, they're packing up. They're leaving. They they want to get away from this place. It's all, all its memories. And as the, the, the friend of Karis comes by to send him goodbye... Reagan sees the, uh, the the priest caller and goes up to hug and, and he kisses the priest which is like she didn't forget everything as the mom said I think she's repressing it but still she, she thinks him I think it's one of the best scenes that there is something coming out of uh, something coming out of this exorcism that is good it's not just the death of two men it's the Saving the soul of, of of a little girl, you know. And that's pretty much my talking about The Exorcist. I think it's um, probably one of the best movies you'll ever see in your life, especially when it comes to suspense, horror, and um, special effects, especially for the time. They hold up extremely well. Because of what they want to they want to make it grounded as possible. Like if you ever saw the making of this movie, they had to have like a uh, hundred pound cameras go upstairs at the same time as other people. And how they got these shots back then, it doesn't even cross your mind that there's a bulky camera above their heads the whole time. Like I mean like there's a guy in a makeshift cart at the top of the stairs. Who is filming people going up the stairs? It's amazing how they got this technology to go together and make it seem seamless. You would never have guessed what they have done to make this film possible. And it's one of the most effective, scary things you'll ever see in your entire life. If you've never seen it, uh, you are missing out, actually. If you're a fan of films, but um, check it out if you're a fan of scary films check it out if you can't buy a um, a possession movie even so it's still an interesting um, like investigation film it's still got the special effects that keep you interested it has every f great film technique in the book you know, it's got it's got symbolism and also objective qualities that make it really great to talk about. And uh, film theories, enough film theories to keep you guessing because they don't show everything. Because that would be monotonous. It wouldn't be good. It wouldn't look good. It wouldn't sound good. The, uh, the film feels at the right length for what it is. And if all you remember is the exorcism theme, I think the first half is better, in my opinion, because the setup, I think, is better, is just as good as, as the conclusion. I don't think it's boring at all. I think it's a... It builds a lot a, a lot of tension in a really 
in, in a lot of good ways.